Hi everyone, my name is Kadir Arden and I'm a graduate student at the University of Washington. Today I'm going to talk about an important extension we made to the Cindy algorithm that is able to identify rational or implicit equation from the measurement data. We call it Cindy Pi, a robust algorithm for parallel implicit sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics. The original Cindy algorithm can only identify dynamical system that has a relatively easy right-hand side structures. But now using Cindy Pi, we can identify much more complicated equations uh, with much more complicated right-hand side structures. If you're interested in our papers, please feel free to check it out using the links below. Moreover, after its publication, the Cindy Pi has been used in many different packages, such as PyCindy Python package or data-driven differential equation.gl Julia packages. If you want to use Cindy Pi for your research and work, please also, please also check out those packages as well. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about some big pictures of what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do is that modeling dynamical system using the measurement data. So this dynamical system could be some robotic system, such as a double pension Monte cart, or maybe some high dimensional PDE system, such as flow past the cylinder, or maybe some complex chemical reaction model, such as busy reaction. And in order to do this, we're going to measure a bunch of data from the dynamics of our interest and using sophisticated machine learning algorithm to figure out the best equation that can describe our dynamics while at the same time best fit our data set. To be more specific, we're interested in identifying differential equation, such as x dot equals to fx. And there are many algorithms that can do that. For example, the sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics algorithm, aka Cindy. What the Cindy algorithm can do is generate a parsimonious yet interpretable model for us. And in the Cindy framework, what is usually given to us is the full state measurement of this system, for example, x1 and x2 of this random file oscillator. And what we have to estimate is the state derivative, such as x1 dot and x2 dot. And what we have to design is a library with many different candidate functions. Those candidate functions represent our belief of what kind of terms that might show up on our right-hand side term. And next, when we gather all those information, we can provide them to the Cindy algorithm and the Cindy will try to solve for a sparse promoting least square problem. This problem is going to generate a sparse vector C that only selects a few terms from our candidate libraries such that we can represent our left-hand side derivative. For example, after the Cindy regression, the term x2 has been selected from the feature library uh, to represent our state derivative x1 dot, and the features x1, x2, x1 squared times x2 has been selected from our library to best represent our state derivative x2 dot. And once we have this sparse vector Cauchy weight, we can finally do a reconstruction step to figure out the symbolic form of the dynamical equations we're looking for. With some modification on the Cindy framework, uh, the Rudy et al. made it possible to identify PDE equations as well, and they call it PDE fine. For example, suppose we have a nonlinear PDE equations, we can measure this PDE equation spatially and gather its measurement data. Next, what we can do is build up a library with many different candidate terms and try to solve for a sparse promoting regression problem. And this spar sparse promoting regression problem is going to generate a sparse vector C that only selects a few terms from our library to best represent our derivative, uh, partial derivative u of t. And finally, again, we can do a reconstruction step to find out the symbolic form of the PDE equations. Although PDE fine and Cindy Pi can be applied to many applications, they do have some drawbacks. For example, they cannot be used to identify this rational system. For example, suppose we have a system x dot equals to minus x divided by sine x, and you're trying to identify it using Cindy. So one immediate question you're going to have is, how should I design my library? Remember, we have to add different candidate terms, right, that might show up on our right-hand side. And now since we have a rational term, we might also have to add some rational candidate functions in our libraries. And without any prior knowledge of what kind of numerators and denominators we might have, we will end up with a huge library with infinitely many combination of the numerators and denominators. And this large library, this large library is not a good sign for us because usually a large library means the conditioning of our matrix is going to get worse, and during the sparse regression process, uh, it's going to be really noise sensitive. So in order to fix this problem, the Megan et al. come up with an idea called implicit Cindy. What implicit Cindy realized is that instead of directly identifying this rational term, 
we can identify its analogous system, which is an implicit equation. For example, if I multiply this 1 plus x term on both sides of the equation, I'm going to end up with an implicit equation. And once I can identify this implicit equation, I can symbolically back solve for x dot and figure out the rational form of my dynamical system. In order to do so, the Megan et al. allowed a combination of state vector x and state derivative x dot in the library. And then they try to solve for a null space vector, a sparse null space vector, that's going to only select a few terms from our library such that when we add them up, it's going to generate our implicit equation. And once we have our, our implicit equation, we can symbolically solve for x dot and get the rational dynamics we're looking for. And that's the idea behind implicit Cindy. And implicit Cindy also has one drawback, which is it is noise sensitive. Remember, we have to solve for the null space of a library matrix. And the null space does not exist when your matrix is full rank, which is always the case when your measurement data is contaminated by the noise. In order to fix this problem, you have to do some post-processing process. And again, this post-processing process is also noise sensitive. So the question is how we can improve this. Well, we can use Cindy Pi. And now I'm going to talk about a really pedagogical examples and show you the core idea behind the Cindy Pi algorithm. Suppose we want to identify this rational equations x dot equals to 1 plus x divided by sine x. So according to implicit Cindy, we know identifying this rational equations equals to identifying this implicit equation. And if we make a further observation here, we can find out this implicit equation actually has three non-implicit form. And by non-implicit form, I mean we can put one term belongs to our implicit equation, put it on the left-hand side, and put the remaining terms on the right-hand side, such that our equation is not implicit anymore. And now, suppose that I tell you that x dot times sine x belong to this implicit equation, and you're required to figure out the remaining part of this implicit equation. So what you can do is put this x dot times sine x term on the left-hand side and build up a library on the right-hand side and perform a sparse regression such that you can figure out the correct terms from the library to best represent your left-hand side term x dot times sine x. And after a sparse regression, you're going to pick out 1 and x from your library, which is the remaining term of this implicit equation. And similarly, if I tell you that x belong to this implicit equation, and you have to figure out the remaining part of this implicit equation, then what you can do is put this x term on the left-hand side and build up a library on the right-hand side, then perform a sparse regression such that you can figure out the remaining terms uh, of this implicit equation. And when you do that, you can pick out the term 1 and x times sine x dot times sine x from the library. And similar thing also happens if I tell you that 1 belongs to this implicit equation. So by this really easy examples, what we did is just generalizing the Cindy algorithm. In the original Cindy algorithm, what we always put on the left-hand side uh, is our state derivative. But now we realized we can actually put any terms belong to our system on the left-hand side and perform a sparse regression to figure out the remaining terms. And once we do that, we can get this alternative non-implicit representation of our implicit equation. And that's how we do the system identification using Cindy Pi. OK, now you might say, what happens if I do not know what kind of term belong to my, to my implicit equation? Because previously, I'm telling you, OK, x dot times sine x belong to this equation, right? But in real life, especially when you're modeling a, non, uh, a black box system, you're not going to know what kind of term belongs to our equation. So what we can do is basically guess what kind of terms that will show up. To do so, we can build up a left-hand side library and also a right-hand side library. This right-hand side library contains all the candidate terms that might show up on the right-hand side. Well, the left-hand side library is going to be used to our, uh, as our guess of what kind of term belong to this implicit equation. For example, we can pick out this term 1 from our left-hand side library, put it here, and in order to get rid of trivial solutions such as 1 equals to 1, we have to delete that same term 1 from our right-hand side library. Now we are ready to perform a sparse regression. And since this term 1 belongs to this implicit equation, after the sparse regression, we're going to figure out the remaining part of our implicit dynamics, which is, um, which is x dot times sine x minus x. And similarly, we can test out term x 
Now, x also belongs to this implicit equation. So after you perform a sparse regression, you're going to have a sparse model. Uh, and the term 1 and x dot times sine x is going to be selected. And moreover, when you test out this model, this, this sparse model on the testing data, it's going to generate a really low prediction error. Now let's try out x squared. Remember, x squared doesn't belong to this implicit equation, right? So when you do the sparse regression, for most of the time, you're going to overfit your library. You're going to have not a sparse model. And this non-sparse model is not going to perform a really good job on the testing data. Similarly, now let's try out x dot. x dot doesn't belong to this implicit equation. So as you might have guessed, after the sparse regression, you're not going to have a sparse model, and you're going to overfit your library. And this model is not going to perform a good job on the testing data. Next, let's try out x times x dot. And similarly, again, not the sparse model. And this model is not going to perform a good job on the testing data. Next, we can try out x dot times sine x. Now, this term belongs to our implicit equation. So after sparse regression, you're going to have a sparse model. And finally, we can try out x dot times cosine x. So from these examples, we know we can actually put any term on the left-hand side and perform a guess, uh, guessing what kind of term that might show up in our implicit equation, such that we can solve for a sparse regression problem to figure out a bunch of candidate models. Mm -hmm. And moreover, each sparse regression problem is independent of each other, which means we can use a par parallel toolbox to speed up the solving process. That's why we call it Cindy Pi, where Pi stands for parallel and implicit. And this, uh, and this similar idea can also be shown uh, in the John's paper. OK, so one important observation we just made is if you make a correct guess, you're always going to generate, uh, for most of the time, you're going to generate a sparse and accurate model. And if you made a wrong guess, you're, uh, you're more likely to generate a dense and inaccurate model. And this important observation is going to be used as our model selection criteria. Moreover, instead of solving each uh, individual sparse regression problem, we can uh, come up with a constrained optimization problem such that we can solve all the candidate model at once. For example, uh, we can build up this uh, optimization problem saying our left-hand side library equals to itself times a sparse matrix. And in order to get rid of the trivial solution, such as identity matrix, we have to constrain our uh, sparse matrix such that its diagonal element is equals to 0. And each column uh, of this sparse matrix represent one candidate model. And we can use the same model selection criteria to figure out which model performs good and which model performs uh, a really bad job, and such that we can figure out the correct model uh, and incorrect model. To give you further understanding of what I mean by accurate model and inaccurate model, let's look at an example, michaelis menten dynamics. Suppose we want to identify this rational system, then we know that if we make our left-hand side guess as x times x dot, we're going to generate a sparse model It really performs a really good job on the testing data. However, when we make a wrong guess, such as x dot times sine x on the left-hand side, we're going to overfit the library. And when we test out those two models on the testing data, and we can find out this sparse model generates around machine epsilon prediction error. Well, this non-sparse model, which overfit our library, is going to generate orders of magnitude much higher prediction error. That's when we know by looking at this plot that the correct guess should be x dot times x, and the correct model should be this sparse model. And finally, we can symbolically solve for x dot and get this rational system that we're looking for. OK, now let's talk about uh, in performance improvement uh, of the Cindy Pi algorithm. Remember, we do not have to solve for null space anymore right? using Cindy Pi. So we can directly improve our uh, noise robustness of the Cindy Pi algorithm. For example, when we compare the noise robustness performance of Cindy Pi and implicit Cindy on michaelis menten dynamics, we find out Cindy Pi has orders of magnitude much more noise robustness than implicit Cindy algorithm. Moreover, we find out uh, Cindy Pi can use less data point to identify rational equations than implicit Cindy algorithm. For example, we tested both algorithms using yeast glycolysis model, and we find out Cindy Pi can use around 10 times less data point to correctly identify this x6 dot term in yeast glycolysis model. And with this improved noise robustness and data efficiency, we can now finally tackle 
um, rational PDE equations. For example, uh, we compare the performance of SIMD pi and PDE fine on this modified KDV equation. This modified KDV equation has a rational term, 2 g naught divided by 1 plus u. And as you gradually increase the g naught value, uh, the rational term is going to play an important part in the whole dynamics, as you can see on these figures. When g naught is 0, that means we do not have any rational dynamics. Both SIMD pi and PDE fine can find out the correct uh, equations of our system. And when g naught is small, uh, we find out that PDE fine starts to add some constant terms and tuning its candidate terms parameters to compensate for that rational dynamics. And when g naught is really large, the PDE fine will finally suffer. It will overfit the library, and the final model is not going to be correct. On the contrary, the SIMD pi is going to correct the, uh, select the correct model at all different levels of g naught. After we know this, uh, we start to challenge ourselves with much more complicated problem, such as busy reaction. Busy reaction is a really complicated chemical reaction model, and its simplified PDE equations can be seen here. The simplified PDE equations has a rational term, which cannot be identified using PDE fine before. So what we did is we simulated the simulation uh, data uh, in the MATLAB, and we provided the simulation data to the SIMD pi. And the SIMD pi correctly identified this rational and implicit equation, and also the remaining dynamics of the system. And when we simulate this identified equation uh, in MATLAB, we find out it matches really good with the ground truth. The second example we looked at is double pendulum. So double pendulum looks pretty easy, right? It only has two links. But actually, double pendulum is a really chaotic and nonlinear system. Moreover, it has a pretty nasty rational terms, pretty complicated rational ODE. So we simulated double pendulum in MATLAB with different noise level, and we uh, provided those data set to SIMD pi. And we find out SIMD pi can correctly identify the ODEs of double pendulum uh, under different noise level. And when we simulate this identified ODEs forward in time, they matches really good with the ground truth. All right, the next examples we used uh, is a system with control input. Uh, if you're a controls expert who is interested in dynamical system uh, with control input, the SIMD pi can also tackle that. For example, the single pendulum with control uh, input, it has a rational term in its ODE. So when we simulated the system in MATLAB uh, under different noise level, and we provided the simulation data to SIMD pi, we find out SIMD pi can generate the correct model. And when we simulate this correct model, uh, it matches really good with the ground truth. And as our, our final examples, uh, we even tried even more uh, challenging tasks. For example, identifying physical laws from the data set. Many physical laws, such as Hamiltonian or Lagrangian, actually has an implicit form. For example, the double pendulum's Euler-Lagrangian equation has an implicit form. So when we simulated double pendulum and building the correct libraries, we find out the SIMD pi can figure out the correct physical laws that's hidden beneath this data set. And in this case, the SIMD pi correctly identified euler lagrangian equation from the, uh, from the simulation data of double pendulum. OK. Now, in summary, we did develop a new algorithm called SIMD pi. This algorithm can parallelly solve for implicit or rational problem. And moreover, it is more noise robust and requires less data point. Finally, it can identify physical laws from the data. If you're interested in our uh, papers, please feel free to check it out. And if you want to use CindyPy for your research at work, please also check out the packages below. And I would like to thank my collaborators, Professor Steve Ronton and Professor Nathan Kurtz at the University of Washington. And thank you all for listening. <laughs>